18 climate models had hundreds of years, over a thousand years of integration time. So it had a whole bunch of five-year periods. So what I did was I, the same thing I did with the satellite data to estimate a feedback, I did the same thing for every possible five-year period from all of the climate models. And here in the infrared, this again, this is the, uh, the greenhouse effect, we see that indeed when the earth warms, the greenhouse effect gets a little stronger. Positive feedback, okay? Good for the models, comparison, not good for humanity. But that's only half the story. This is the energy that's being lost. Like your pot of water on the stove, there's energy being lost. Well, warming and cooling, of course, is also a matter of how much heat you're pumping in. That's the sunlight part. Here's the sunlight part, reflected sunlight. Here's the distribution. This is a frequency distribution. I, I really didn't say that. The, the, here's the number of five-year periods. So there were like, you know, 800 five-year periods from all the climate models that came up with this feedback. So the point is, is for reflected sunlight, satellite says there were no five-year periods from any of them, over a thousand years of integration time, that came close to what the satellite says. And this out here is all negative feedback territory. This is positive feedback, okay? The net effect for how warm the, the pot of water gets is the input and output and all you do is sum them together and this is the sum so here's where the climate models are as I mentioned climate models all have positive feedback and here's their frequency distribution of feedback parameters that I computed from all possible five-year periods here's what the satellite shows this is a huge difference you get out here you're talking about catastrophic global warming oh wait a minute actually if the climate system is below zero, if it's below that, the climate system is inherently unstable. You don't want to be down here. Now, the fact that some climate models were, it was only for five years. You know, it didn't stay there for 100 years or 1,000 years. It was just something that was going on in natural climate variability in the model at the time. But still, everything to the left of this line is positive <coughs> feedback. So, the question arises, why is this, there a huge discrepancy? between the models and the satellite. And I think this is gonna this is gonna create a big stir when this is published amongst the modelers. And it turns out that the modelers admitted in their most recent um, in their most recent there we go. In their most recent report, the 2007 IPCC report, you know they make it sound like they understand climate change, but they do admit that they really don't understand low clouds as much as they'd like to. They say that the, the biggest uncertainty in feedbacks is low cloud behavior. And indeed, this is where I found the huge discrepancy. It's not where I would have guessed it was, but it's where they guessed it would be, if they had to guess. <laughs> okay. The question arises, these models are all based on observed behavior. Observed weather behavior, observed climate behavior. How is it that all these modelers program processes into their models based on the, how the climate system behaves. But then the models behave with all of this positive feedback that we don't see when we look back at nature. It seems like a disconnect. I am now convinced that the source of that disconnect is due to a confusion by the researchers between cause and effect when looking at cloud variations. For 15 years before I got working in this, I always thought, you know, I always heard the climate modelers say, well, we know feedbacks in the climate system are positive because when the Earth gets warm for a year or two, the low clouds go away, and that's positive feedback because it lets more sunlight in and enhances the warming. And I always wondered, wait a minute, how do they know it wasn't the low clouds going away that caused the warming? Well, it turns out they don't. <laughs> I work with a PhD computational physicist, and when I told him about this, he says, oh, come on, they could be that dumb. Well, <clears throat> we came up with a simple model to demonstrate the effect, submitted it for publication. It went to two IPCC-related climate model experts. Okay? One is actually does climate modeling, the other one is an expert in climate models. And to my astonishment, they both reviewed the paper and came back and said, you're right, we didn't think of this. <laughs> in fact, they had to make their own simple little models to convince themselves that this was really going on. And ultimately, all it comes down to is cause and effect. 
there is cloud variability that causes temperatures to change. And if you look at that and think it's the temperature change causing the clouds to change, the climate system will always look sensitive. It will always look like positive feedback. It only goes in one direction. So the climate models are built on faulty assumptions related to uh, cause and effect. Now since it seems like some politicians like to claim that there aren't scientists that publish stuff. They just, you know, claim that things are going on in nature that they really can't prove. You know, we skeptics. So anyway, so here's a paper we published back in August of 07 where we showed this negative feedback in the tropics <coughs> and nobody found really any fault with it even though it was just restricted to the tropics, not the whole earth. Uh, mainstream media did not report on it at all. Next one, this one is just coming out now in Journal of Climate, probably the most prestigious climate journal in the world, where we show with a simple model how causation in the other direction can make the climate system look like it's really sensitive. So that, that's the one that got reviewed by those two reviewers, and I'm surprised that we actually got that through. And then the new one relates to these new satellite estimates that show for the whole Earth, uh, when we look at five years of satellite data, feedbacks are more negative than any five-year period in any of the climate model runs. So I'll be interested to see what the, uh, what the response is to that from the climate modeling community, because they've been like this, I don't know, it's a giant machine that's being driven by politics. I know some of the leaders of this group, and they have political motivations going back at least 20 years. It's not a scientific, pure scientific thing. In fact, they don't even, you know, they don't even have the scientists vote on what they put in the front end of the report. The policy, uh, the summary for policymakers, it's thin enough where you can actually read it and understand it. You know, very few people work on that, and it's definitely slanted in terms of the science. But this brings up an interesting question, as I mentioned before. If the climate system is not sensitive, that means the CO2 that we've produced so far is not nearly enough to cause the warming we've seen. So, okay, Spencer, <clears throat> you think CO2 hasn't caused warming, something else might have? Well, what is it? As they've actually asked me that before. And there are other people who say that there are natural modes of climate variability. Meteorologists know this, except the meteorologists aren't very good at putting together climate models. And the climate modelers aren't very receptive to meteorologists waving their hands and saying, well, you know, El Nino could be doing this, and La Nina could be doing that, and PDO could be doing something else. Um, so anyway, we use a simple climate model to look at the possibility. How about Mother Nature causing global warming? This is one of the main modes of climate oscillation. This is over the last hundred years. This is just an index of how the general circulation of the ocean and atmosphere changes out in the Pacific about every 30 years. This is the main thing that controls our hurricane activity. Our hurricanes really ramped up in the last few years. Ever since I've been in this business for 30 years, including when I was going to school, okay, the Hurricane Center director has been going to Congress and warning Congress that we have been in decades of lulls, of a lull in hurricane activity, and that eventually the hurricanes were going to return. Well, you've probably never been told that, you know, because a reporter isn't going to put that in the newspaper. But it's the truth. They knew that the hurricanes were going to return, and they've returned. Well, they're re related to this, the specific decadal oscillation. And I'm not the first one to point out that if you compare the last hundred years of the PDO, we call it, with the global temperature record, it, is it just a coincidence that there was a positive phase of the PDO during this warming period up until 1940? There was a negative phase of the PDO during this period where it was kind of flat or even cooling up to the 70s. That's when some scientists started worrying about the next ice age coming. And then it flipped again, positive phase, warming again. Is that just an accident? So I asked the natural question, which should have been apparent to anyone in the past, uh, hey, what if these changes in the general circulation of the ocean and atmosphere system, because they're coupled, have like a 1 or 2% change in cloudiness with them? Well, I made a little model. In fact, it wasn't mine. It was one of the IPCC reviewers that said, hey, why don't you use this simple model? Okay, so I use a simple model. 
and I assume that clouds change like this curve. Now, as the clouds change, they let more and more or less energy into the ocean. Okay, and if you let en more energy in the ocean, it doesn't automatically.